My name is Rufaida. I'm a platform engineer at Liquid Reply. One thing, one more thing about me is that I like watches, traditional watches. How many people in this room like watches? <laughs> Good, quite few. Um, if you have this watch, will you buy it? Just raise your hand. Do you like this watch? <laughs> You felt in a trap. <laughs> this watch is 30 million and took 44 years to be created. The creator died even before actually you finish it. In real life, before you buy something, you actually ask how much. You check the prices before you buy, you don't buy blindly. But when it comes to infra cost, we actually, the majority of people doesn't care. They just don't care how do we need this instance, how many instances do we need, how exactly memory, how much memory do we need actually for the application. It's a lot of details that it's a headache. We just copy paste code and then post it. How do we solve this problem? We stay like, we're still lazy engineers, but we still have a visibility about our infra cost. Today I'm here to discuss this with you. So the combination between OpenTrufu and InfraCost and GitHub Action give you a cost visibility in your PR request and you can check it before you apply the plan of your infrastructure. So today we're gonna speak about what's OpenTrufu, the use case of OpenTrufu and how to migrate from Terraform to OpenTrufu what's InfraCost, how InfraCost work, and how to write, how to integrate it and write your own action. Little story before we start. Um, as you may know, like last year, HashiCorp changed their uh, Terraform open source li license to business license. And this leads to the birth of OpenTrufu. What's OpenTrufu? OpenTrufu is an open source Terraform fork. That's a drop-in replacement for Terraform v1.6. And it's fully compatible with all previous versions. It's maintained by Linux Foundation. What does that mean? It means that Linux Foundation guarantee that open source will remain truly open source under, under widely trusted license from the companies community driven so that pull requests and um, and projects are governed by communities. Impartial, so the values, features and fixes are accepted based on the community, based on their values to the communities, layered and modular um, so that with with a friendly project structure so anyone can contribute on top, which create an ecosystem of tools and integrations. And finally, backward compatible, which uh, means that existing codes can drive values years from now. Um, the most popular use case of OpenTrufu is that OpenTrufu simplify your multi-cloud deployment this increase your fault tolerance and give you greater resilience. Um, open to full simplify your streamline your application infrastructure management. It handles entire applications and it lets you manage your infrastructure and orchestration for applications. Self host cluster, self service cluster, the main the, the benefit of self-serve model is that your project team is not, can, can manage their own infrastructure. So this reduced the centralized, uh, this reduced the needs and centralized operation uh, teams. <laughs> this, this reduced the dependency on your operation team. So um, policy compliance, which open to full enforce policy uh, compliance, enforce policy as code. So, uh, 
so the <coughs> so it reduced your fork. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, it reduces your bottleneck uh, on ticket based review processes. Set up for platform as service application like Heraco. Open to four can give you configuration for SDN, DNS, and uh, other services without web interface. Um, the interact of software defined networking. Um, this actually, Open to four can. Open to four can configure your setup without actually need. <coughs> Open to four actually can interact with your uh, with your network configuration, so this give you an automated deployment. And of course, Open to four manage your cluster resources and uh, uh, services. So as Open to four is a fork of Terraform. It has exactly the same workflow. So you first write your uh, infrastructure as code, you plan it, and then you apply it. So Open to four. If you, if later I have time, I can show you this in action. This is how it looks like when creating S3 bucket with Terraform, and this how it looks like when creating with Open to four. It looks exactly the same. Infra cost. What's infra cost? Infra cost is a leading open source cloud project. It has over 3 million resources priced across different cloud provider. You can access it the, through CLI or uh, cloud pricing API, or you can integrate it with your CI CD. They have the option of self-hosted or integrated with their cloud subscriptions. How it works? Actually, InfraCost is scanned your um, infrastructure as code. It generates a cost estimation for your infrastructure, and then it can give you the option to integrate it with CI CD. And then you can see the cost as a pull request. So like this, you can see the previous cost the new cost and the differences. Later on, we can see also this in action. In order to use the infra cost, you have to integrate it with your CI/CD. In our in our uh, in our case, is the um, GitHub action. So how do we do this? Simple. You just go to infra cost uh, document, and then you take the template. You save the template. Um, this template basically like install InfraCost, do the cost um, breakdown, and then post it here to the to the GitHub. But this has one single problem: that InfraCost this template is limited to one single Terraform repository or infrastructure as code repository. How do we actually? What if your repository has different? Services, Terraform services, or Open Truffle services. What if your repository has like a monolithic, like your company use mono approach for your Terraform or for your infrastructure as code? We write our custom integration. How do we do that? GitHub Action gives you three types of custom actions the JavaScript action, composite action, and container action. How does container action looks like. Container action has three main components. The first component is action yama. Second component is container file or Docker file. And the third component is the entry point, which contain actually your business logic. And you can see. Now we are ready actually to see the code in action. Um, but we need a few preparation before we start. We have, we can actually first install InfraCost. It's easy if you use Mac OS, like you do um, pro install InfraCost. Or we need also to install the InfraCost key. And then what do we do with the key? We store it in GitHub. 
uh, secrets because we are going to integrate it with GitHub Actions and we store it here. So I'm gonna show you this live, how do we do it? So can you see it, is it clear? Good. This is the action YAML, which uh, actually contain the, um, the have, which actually contain the description and runs on Docker file. It's basically calling the Docker file. And Docker file, as usual, contain the installation. We are here installing OpenTofu, and here we are installing InfraCost, GitHub CLI, and other required installation, and then we give the permission. The entry point is simple. As InfraCost, as you see in the previous um, picture or screenshot, that used InfraCost is using PRI. I can show you also the comment here. It's using uh, the pull request. How do we get pull requests here? Uh, by getting the PR number. It actually get the commit or the pull request. So we need the pull request as PR number. And here we are creating a development environment. And here is basically our logic. When we have different services, we create a simple loop to go through the services. So we basically go directory by directory in a repositories which we fetched previously in this step. And then we do TOFU in it. It's basically like Terraform in it. And then we do, uh, we create an, a workspace. It's basically like Terraform. You created a Terraform workspace new, and then you do also like with Open TOFU, you do TOFU and workspace new. And in order for the developer to see the plan in the pull request, or in case something went wrong with the plan, the plan doesn't work or something, um, decided to post the plan actually in, um, in, this, in the PR itself. So we just do a two for plan and we post it. Later on, I'm gonna show you all these like when we create a PR. And then finally, we do infra cost breakdown path to see the cost, and then we commented the cost. Uh, let's create a pull request. Not here. <laughs> So I have prepared something for the pull request. Here is the S3, uh, S3 service, let's assume, and there is another service, I just call it service two, just for simplifying it. And here I'm basically creating a service, um, an S3 bucket. And here I created a little bit more than S3 bucket. So let's create a branch. Okay. Need to add everything and let's commit it and create a pull request. Okay, now we push it and see how it is. When we create the pull request, the pipeline will automatically try triggered. And then you can see it here that started already. And we have actually few steps in the pipeline. It takes a little bit of time to run. So the first we are building just the Docker file. 
and then we check out the repository we need the aws script to see the plan and then we run our action that i just show you um, while it's running i can show you a few things here also if you are using visual studio code there is an integration a plugin that you can integrate uh, with your visual studio code it called infracost it's called infracost so this actually show you oh god demo. this show you the cost actually in action before even you submit it or create a pull request so this is like it gives you 40 dollars if you change it to micro you can see the cost updated here also save of course <laughs> It's 10 euro because we changed it to micro. And you can see also which services has a cost or not. Now the pipeline is actually finished. We can see the pull request. We have actually plan. It's showing you the plan that's uh, created an instance and everything. This is the same if you do to full plan locally. Is exactly the same and it's kind of take a while until it shows but I can show you the cost locally oh, I'm again opening the wrong one so if we do if we go to the service let's say service 2 and then we do infra cost Dash, dash path and then here I want to see the cost here it give you the view of the cost like you can see that you created a new services if we created another services let me create it just go ahead and create another service like service 2 service 3 and then I will copy the same here. If we create another service and then we save it, if we apply it here, we can see it also. CD. Oh, God. If we do infra cost dash dash breakdown dash dash path and then here yes I mean breakdown <laughs> it's actually give you all the costs and all services. One more thing I want to show you actually before we are done here is that the migration for open to full to infra cost is really simple. If you have your you have to make sure that all your plan are applied and that there is nothing planned and then you do actually let's say terraform plan terraform in it, initialize first. It's taking a while until it's initialized. Today. should not be a problem <laughs> so, 
on. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, it's it's simple actually, but it's kind of I should have prepared it before because it take a little bit of a while to initialize. But it's I can show you here. It's exactly the same, but I couldn't show you an action. So that's all from my side. Sorry for the confusing a little, and that's it. Thank you for presentation. Uh, I have a question uh, about how do you um, estimate the cost of dynamic resources? So, for instance, I have an instance group, uh, and uh, that can scale uh, from zero to 100 VMs. Uh, can you provide uh, information about uh, I think, that? I think this is like not a cloud cost. This is like Kubernetes cost, and for this, it has another tools like. Cloud infra cost doesn't help you with this at all. But you maybe can search for like a cluster cost. I think there were a nice tool called your cluster cost, I think. I'm not sure of the name. But I don't think you can measure it here. OK. Again, thank you very much for the presentation. I have a question. Uh, is it possible to export this data to the further location? And if so, is it possible to integrate it into the workflow? Which so, data you mean? So the uh, InfraCost gives you output, right? So is it possible to export it to some other location? Maybe, I don't know, database or S3 bucket or some yes. file? Yes, it is, actually. You also you have a cloud, cost, cloud InfraCost subscription. You paid for it, and you can have it all in their cloud, and you can download a CSV file, or you can even like um, add like in the documentation. You can see how can you import it or export it. It's it has this option. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, thanks for the presentation. One question on uh, how do you calculate for the spot instances? If 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 most of my workload is using spot instances, and how do how does this calculate? I think I don't know what spot instances. Can you can you clarify what is it? Uh, in AWS, you have uh, spot instances where you get dynamic uh, cost based on the availability. So you take from a pool of resources where it is unused in the AWS data center. So they give you for. 60 to 70 percent lesser cost. I'm afraid I can't answer your question because I never played with that. So. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the presentation. Uh, in our project, we have a lot of workspaces for some of our Terraform projects, something like 30 or 40. Uh, and we actually looked into uh, open into InfraCost at some point and it just created a ton of comments in the GitHub pull request. Is it possible to just summarize the changes into one comment in the GitHub pull request? Yeah, I think they have this hide and new, like you have this behavior. You can use hide and new, like here, like I'm going to show you in the entry point. Do you use here like new every time or update? You can use also hide and new. It will hide all the commands and give you only the new one and then give you also summarizing it. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, we didn't see it before, so yeah, <laughs> Beha they that's have quite useful. Yeah, they have different behavior. You can always like they have new update, hide a new and hide an update, I think. I'm not sure, but you can check the documentation. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have time for one more question if there is one. Hey, thank you. Um, I actually use Infocrost in a lot of my projects, um, so I really appreciate the work you guys uh, do on that. Anyway, uh, one of the things I noticed um, is like it doesn't, like AWS has egress costs and stuff, right? It doesn't really account for that kind of stuff, obviously, because it doesn't know about it. Um, do you know if there's any plans to add like some sort of custom configuration that will allow me to specify what I assume might be the egress for the month, just so I can show that to a customer? I don't know, I cannot answer you because I don't work with InfraCost, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe InfraCost guy can answer you. I don't know like if there's a plan or not. All right, I think there was one more question on this side. No? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Oh, oh sorry, no, we do have a question. <laughs> so I'm actually curious, what are the requirements for the provider to actually work with InfraCost? And what do you mean with requirement? I, like I have my own provider for X cloud or no, no I, there is like some cloud. I, I want to integrate with InfraCost. I think if your provider like are listed in InfraCost documentation, you can use InfraCost because they don't support all providers. I'm afraid if you have your own <laughs> provider, you can't use it. I mean, yeah, maybe you can request InfraCost, but. For now, they support few providers, and you can check them in your in their documentations. Thank you. You're